Hey guys, and how's it going today? So we're gonna be looking at how to use MuseScore, which is a free music composition software to practice our instruments. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch up MuseScore. You can see here I have a bunch of different sheet music I've already done. But for you, you probably haven't done any sheet music yet. If I haven't made you a uh, file for this, then we're gonna just look at it as making a blank file, maybe copying a song from one of our books. So I'm gonna hit new score. It's gonna pop up this window. Now, you can search through all the lists to try and find the instrument that you're working on, but you can also just go over here and search. So for this example, I'm gonna do guitar. Okay, and it gives you a lot of different options. Um, in this case, you know, the first one, it says guitar, steel drums, that's not what I want. I want guitar, treble clef, and if you've been studying and paying attention in class, you know what treble clef is. Okay, and I'm gonna add that in. And then I'm gonna come down here and we hit next. Now you could select electric guitar if you're playing electric guitar, or you could do acoustic guitar, treble clef. Um, really any of the regular like name for guitars, so classical guitar would also be a good option. That's fine too. In this case, I'm just gonna go Generic guitar, treble clef, click next. It asks for a key. If you haven't studied keys yet, that's fine. C major will be the default of pretty much everything that you've learned until we do start studying keys. The time signature, again, is at the beginning of your music. In this case, I'm gonna stick with the 4-4 because I'm gonna be copying one of the very first exercises in the guitar book, which is in 4-4 time. Tempo is important. By default, MuseScore will set it to 120. I tell most students that in order to show proficiency, I expect you to be able to play it flawlessly at 80 beats per minute. So I'm gonna click on this. I wanna click show tempo marking on my score. This is important because we're gonna use this to actually set the speed and adjust how fast we play to practice later on. I'm gonna set the default speed. I'm actually going to set it, I said the goal would be 80, but I'm actually gonna set it to 60. And then as far as how many measures I'm gonna have, I'm gonna set that to four. Okay, so measure again is a grouping of every four beats. So in this case, I would have four groupings of four beats, meaning the song will have 16 beats total. Untitled score, I'm just gonna put example for practicing in Muse score. If you're copying music from one of your books, you can always name it the same thing. You can fill in the composer and arranger, subtitle if it has one, lyricist, and copyright all of that you can fill in if it has that information or if you know that information from the piece of music you're looking at. In this case, this is all I'm gonna write is the name and then I'm gonna click done. Okay, and over here, I've now got my example. You'll see the four measures, time, sig uh, sorry, time signatures over here, BPM or how fast it's gonna be. Okay, now if I wanna hear how fast that's gonna be, you'll see a metronome symbol up here. If I click off of that, it won't be enabled. So now it just plays the song. If there was notes in there, you would hear them play. But if I wanted to hear a click while the song is going or a metronome tapping, then I click the metronome until it's blue and click play. So now the metronome is counting at 60 beats per minute. Now, like I said, I'm gonna base this off of one of the very first examples in the Hal Leonard guitar book that I use for a lot of students. So what I need is quarter notes to start off. So in this case, I'm gonna have a quarter note over here. So I can click that. If you hover over it, it'll also give you a, uh, a shortcut for it. So if I hit five on the number row at the top of the page, it would select quarter note. If I hit six, it'd be half, seven would be whole. If I hit four, for example, that'd be an eighth note, so on and so forth. So these are really convenient. As you get better with the software, you can learn all these little keyboard shortcuts. But I'm gonna stick with the quarter note because that's what I need to start with. And you'll notice it changed the rest that we had by default in there to be split up. So that's okay, once we click a note in, the rest will go away automatically. So I'm gonna start with E, and I'm gonna go to F, and then I'm gonna go to G, and then back to F, E, F, G, you can probably hear that the notes are actually coming out. So this is a good way to, you know, if you're playing and you're in tune, you'll be able to tell whether or not you're playing the right note or the wrong note. 
And after this last measure, I'm going to do a whole note. So that would be uh, seven on the keyboard. I'm going to put that in E. Okay. So now here is the little exercise. Now you could hear every note as I was clicking on it, but if I come back here and click this arrow, it'll put the song all the way at the beginning. And I click play, and I can hear what I just wrote down. Okay, so there's an auditory example of what you'd be working on with a visual representation of where you should be while you're playing the exercise. Now, I wouldn't recommend starting playing with MuseScore right away because at 60 beats per minute, it might be too fast for you. So you should be practicing the accuracy, maybe reading your notes, E, F, G, F, E, F, G, F, until you feel more comfortable. Once you're more comfortable reading the notes and you can play them, then you start trying to hone in the rhythm by practicing with the metronome, or in this case with MuseScore, which has the metronome and the speed. Now I said proficiency for my students is typically 80 beats per minute. So once you've done 60 and you can do that pretty well, you should always be challenging yourself. If you're not, if you're not struggling a little bit, then you're not pushing yourself forward. So in this case, I could bump it up to say 70. Now I could have done 61, 62, 63, gradually like that, but usually jumps of five to 10 are a good uh, are a good way to keep yourself pushing forward. So now I'm gonna make sure that I'm at the back of the song again, or the beginning of the song. I'm gonna hit play. Okay, and I stopped a little early there, but the idea was it was slightly faster. So you would keep increasing until you got to that 80 beats per minute, or if the song gives us a indication of how fast it should be exactly, then we could put that in. So just to show a more drastic increase, I'm gonna put 120 beats per minute in, and now we'll hear that difference. So that was two times faster than what it started at. But this allows you to gradually build speed in what you're working on. Now this is great for like a, a small example, but what if you're working on a big song and you need to work on just like maybe a measure or two of that song? Well, that's also possible here by looping, okay? So up here we have a loop and we see that if I do that, these two little flags that pop up and that tells me that it's gonna loop the song. So if I hit play, it's just gonna keep going and going and going and going. So let's turn that off. I'm gonna select just this measure. I'm gonna hit loop again. Now it's gonna loop just that measure. So if I hit play, I can hear just that measure over and over again. I could play along to that measure. Maybe I can't do that measure at 120, but the rest of the song's at 120. So maybe I'll knock that back to 100 and practice just at 100 beats per minute while I'm trying to perfect this measure. There is sometimes a little glitch, as you notice there, it was ending a little short. And this is just something that MuseScore does. I can't complain too much. You probably can't complain too much either. It's free software, so um, I'm just gonna delete these just because they're in the way. But yeah, so that would be how I would loop one measure. If I click on one measure and then shift click on another, I can loop two measures. Or if I'm working on a bigger section, I can click shift click again, get three measures, loop. And look, now I'm working at three measures. If you're maybe a measure is too big or three measures too big and you're only worried about two notes, I can shift click those two notes and also loop just those two notes or three notes or four notes or however I need it to be, okay? So all of that would help me practice because it helps me build my speed gradually. A lot of people try to play too fast in the beginning and it's really about changing the speed gradually. So going from 60 to 70 to 80, so on and so forth, right? So this is great for that kind of practice. Now let's say um, you're a guitar student or a ukulele student and you've been working on sheet music and tablature. You can always come over here to add in the tablature. We're gonna click the drop down next to the guitar. For piano, this won't really make sense, but when you select piano, it'll have both staffs, treble and bass for you. Now we're gonna click the gear icon here and then we're gonna go down to where it says create a linked staff. Okay, and you'll notice it added in another treble clef. 
Well, that's not really helpful because it's the same thing twice. So we're gonna click this gear icon again, and where it says staff type and it says standard, we're gonna click on that. And we're gonna to go to tab six strings simple. And all of a sudden, without having to type in two different things, the tabs automatically pop up for the sheet music up here. Now this is really helpful in like first position stuff on the guitar, but if you were practicing a more complex song, oftentimes the tabs will be placed in, in like what would be first or second position. It tries to go into first position as much as possible by default. Um, so if, it was that, if that was the case, I would recommend typing in the tabs and then connecting a link staff for the sheet music so that the sheet music will be correct, but the tabs will be correct as well. Whereas if you automatically fill in the tabs, the tabs, you know, for example, fret zero on high E could also be fret five on B. So, you know, you might wanna play fret five on B because the pattern of what you're playing is a little bit easier, but in this case, it's gonna do zero by default, okay? So that's a quick overview of how you can use MuseScore to help you practice. Now, as my general recommendation is, if you can get five minutes in, every day, that's good. But it's kind of like the bare minimum. A lot of people will say, well, I didn't have time to sit down for 20 minutes or 30 minutes and practice. Okay, five minutes is better than no minutes. Okay, so always try to get at least that in. But ideally, we wanna practice at least, and I emphasize at least 15 minutes a day. And that should be done for five to six out of seven days a week. And you should never take more than one day off in a row as well as never taking off the day after a class. And that's because you wanna make sure that you're keeping everything retained. If you take the day off, off after a class, you're actually going to lose some information because you took too much time between when you learned it and practicing it. Whereas if you practice the day after or even right after a class, you're more likely to retain that information for a longer period of time. And if you repeatedly practice, meaning consistently, whether it be that five minutes or 15 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour every day, you're gonna retain the information a lot better as well. Okay, so thanks again for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and I will see you guys next time.